Well, can you believe it? Uh, the election is less than a week away, and there's lots on the line both here in Maine and nationwide. And for many people, election season can be causing stress and anxiety. In fact, a study by the American Psychological Association found that 70% of people are feeling election stress this year, but there are some ways to help cope. Here to tell us more is Brunswick-based psychologist Dr. Susan Cook. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. We really appreciate it. So first off, can we talk about your experience with election-related stress? How big of a problem is it in general and especially right now? I, I think it's an enormous problem. And I think it's both an enormous problem because we don't know what's going to happen next Tuesday, but also because we are listening to all of the verbalization, the verbal violence that goes back and forth. We're very much aware of that. It's kind of hard to get away from. It's in the media all the time. Uh, so, when we're we talking, you referenced about the future just a little bit. Uh, we don't know who's going to win yet, but when somebody right. does win, uh, how do you deal with that with people I if the person that you wanted to win does not win? Yeah. What's most important in a time, a stressful time like this, are your connections to the people close to you, the people that you love. Uh, your children, your partners, uh, whoever that might be, those are the kinds of things that return you to, I'm here, I'm now, I'm, you know, I am, not, I, I am in my living room, everything feels fine, I'm patting my dog or my cat, life is going to go on. When we start to feel those moments of stress come on, what are some like just initial things that we should be doing? I mean, breathing, exercises, things like that? Yeah, there, um, it, breathing is very important, as we know. Uh, there are some very specific uh, breathing techniques. One that I uh, encourage people to do a lot is something called resonance breathing. Resonance breathing is very, very simple. Uh, shorter inhale, longer exhale. We could do some right now in sure. a minute if you wanted. Um, what resonance breathing does, it tones the vagal nerve. It lowers blood pressure. It lowers your heart rate. Not right away necessarily, but if you let yourself do resonance breathing for five minutes a day, you are moving toward being facile with it. Uh, there's actually an app that is very, very simple to use. It's called the Breathing App. It's free on Google uh, Play. Um, and it basically, it gives you a visual to guide your breathing. You can set uh, what feels comfortable to you in terms of how many in-breaths, how many out-breaths. Um, it's, it's, it's a tool that people can use. Uh, if they, you know, if people are always uh, reluctant to kind of just sit down and follow a technique. If it's on your phone, honestly, people will turn to it. Um, it's very accessible. So, and it's simply shorter inhale, longer exhale. There is not only on the, uh, there's not only a visual on the, uh, the breathing app, there's also an auditory uh, that you can follow that's one, you know, two tones, shorter and longer. And in allegedly, in doing that, that also will help your brain waves move into uh, a meditative state, which is, as we know, calm. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most important topics right here, questions when it comes to discussing politics with friends and family who hold diff different views, and that mm -hmm. happens in every family, every friendship circle. How would you suggest to make sure those conversations remain civil and respectful, or how about this, just say right off the bat, I don't want to talk about politics. Yeah. I, I think evasion, I think deciding it's off topic, I think that's fine to do. One of the things that I always encourage people to do in talking to someone where it might be a little bit contentious is, you know, a couple very simple rules. One is each person gets to be the expert in what they think and feel. You might have an observation, but ultimately you're the expert on what you think and feel. When you disagree with someone, what can easily happen, and I say this after doing this work for a long time, uh, people can lapse into 
being accusatory. People can lapse into making judgments about you, your person, because of what you think and feel. However, if we have the reminder that each person gets to be the expert on what they think and feel, you get to be the expert on what you think and feel, this is where I am. Another little shorthand term is no mind reading about what's going on in someone else's head. That's one way in which you can, you can talk to people about difficult topics so it doesn't become uh, verbally violent. Verbal violence, uh, I do a lot of trauma work. Verbal violence, verbal aggression uh, can be absolutely very close to, if not traumatic for people. And trauma puts us into a whole other ballpark. Uh, Dr. Bessel van der Kirk, who has published uh, The Body Keeps the Score, which has sold over well over three million copies since it was published in 2014. Uh, Bessel van der Kirk reminds us that when we get into a trauma state, we can either get into flight, fight mode or freeze, freeze slash shut down. Uh, when we freeze, our Dr. van der Kirk tells us again uh, that when we freeze, our frontal lobes go offline, meaning our executive planning ability, how we get from here to there. After 9-11, people had, could not figure out how to get home. I don't know, you probably don't remember 9-11. I do. Um, it, uh, that's what can happen. And that also means that your capacity to really think about cause and effect, like if this happens, will this happen? Uh, how do I how do I plan? All of that can go offline. It's very important, thus, to think about if you feel yourself getting traumatized, to step back, to do some resonance breathing. The other thing that happens uh, in these times of verbal intensity is people start talking about this stuff on their phone with their grandma, and the children are listening. You know, uh, people start saying things in front of their children that uh, also can be very unsettling and anxiety provoking for kids. I've worked with kids for many, many years, and I cannot tell you the number of times kids tell me something that their mom didn't say it to them directly. Mom was talking on the phone to Grammy, and she told Grammy, and the children, you know, the child hears. It's very, very unsettling for kids. If people start talking about this stuff in front of their kids, that's when the first possibility of just don't go there. Do not talk about it in front of your kids. And if you're on the phone, uh, look around <laughs> and see who is listening and, and monitor your conversation. Some very good advice this morning. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Well, right now it is at 923. Remember, if you need a mental health support, we have a phone number. Uh, it's going to be on your screen. Just call 211. All right.